Hi. It's December already. And here I am. I have my show installed. I'm going to give you a, a tour of my, my big fancy show I've been waiting a year to put up here. Um, this is downtown Northampton, the gallery called APE, right on Main Street, 126 Main Street. Northampton's right out the window. It's a big space. I have it all to myself. I have 30 paintings in here. And one of the things I really worked to was to make a bunch of big elephants that I could exhibit here like they were a herd. So I will walk you through them um, in just a little bit. So right when we walk in the gallery, the very first painting here is the first one I did of Simone. Uh, I have painted her twice. And what I want to show you first is just to give you a sense of the whole gallery and then I will come back and go through the individual walls. So this is this whole big wonderful space that I have all to myself and I literally have 30 paintings in here. Um, and I wanted, so the elephants are all here on this first wall. And they're hung at different heights, as you can see, because I wanted to treat them like a herd uh, and show them, show how tall they were relative to one another, approximately. Uh, I do, I'll show you for Ty, I do have it marked on the wall how tall he is. So on the very first wall here in the window, I just called Anna's Eye. And Anna's the first elephant that I got to meet that I was painting, and I went down to Maryland to find her in Maryland. Now dead ahead here, this is my girlfriend Stephanie. And Stephanie I have talked about so many times. There's just a lot of magic in this painting, I think. For me, things that how did I do that? Um, there's all sorts of things that just come through here in the ear and just the way the highlight is and various things I used for texture for her. Anyway, Stephanie is 45, so she's the second oldest elephant on this wall. Uh, I think Anna might be around 40. But next to Stephanie is uh, Zuberi, who is only eight. Um, she's 10 now, but she was only eight when I met her and she had just come over from Swaziland. And uh, again, there are magical things that I'm very proud of in that painting that just sort of happened. And uh, so there's little eight-year-old Zuberi. So this is Ty. And Ty is the old man on the wall, and he's the tallest one on the wall. He's about nine foot five at the shoulder, which is where they measure elephants. And I'll show you the mark on the wall up above. I first thought, well, let me hang them at their actual height. It would have been at the ceiling. I couldn't have done it in this room. Um, I do try to paint close to actual size. I'm probably within 10% of actual size, but, but maybe I'm underestimating how maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe he's even bigger than this. But uh, Ty is the only Asian elephant on the wall. He's also only the only male elephant on the wall. Uh, Asian, in Asian elephants, only the males have tusks. In Asian elephants, they also lose the pigmentation on their trunks and on their ears and little others, other parts of their body as they age. So it's a sign of age that they would get this, this paler skin. It, it ties shoulder mark is way up there. So he is um, actually compared to me, he is like two feet taller than this. So the bottom of his painting would more likely start here if it was hung at his actual height. And next door to him, this is the second one of Simone. Simone was the first one inside the door. Simone was 19 years old when I met her. Simone and Stephanie were approximately the same height, but um, she's a very lanky young thing. But Stephanie outweighed her by a ton. So in their family group, Stephanie is the dominant. She's the mama of all of them. She's the matriarch of the herd. And then we go over here to the last two on this wall. And they are Zolani and Shenga. Shenga is the one on the left, and I met her at the Cleveland Zoo, and they had six African elephants there. Um, an old-time family, they're not getting any more. I'm sure they're all on birth control. Um, but she had the most complex forehead of any elephant I have ever seen anywhere, which was the most amazing thing to me. Um, and she was pretty wonderfully wrinkled in all sorts of other places, too. 
but it was mainly this that was like, oh my God, how, let me do that, let me go in there and find her. But she is actually um, about 35 years old and she is about nine feet at the shoulders. So she's, no, she's not a tiny girl either. She's hung lower because her shoulder height is actually out of the picture, so she'd be higher than that. And Zolani here is the youngest one on the wall, and she is the shortest one on the wall. And I actually cheated a little bit on her because I made her tusks a little bit longer. She's one of the elephants along with Simunye and Zuberi down there that came over from Swaziland, and their tusks were cut for their own safety in transit before they came. And I only arrived at the zoo about three months after they had arrived. So their tusks were growing back in. They grow in about a half an inch a month. Um, and so I wanted to cheat hers out a little bit, but I decided not to do it in the future for the other ones because to show their tusk link is actually really to freeze them in time at that moment, which is part of my intention too. But uh, this is probably how tall Zolani is. She's a young, she was just six years old when I met her. So those are my, that's my elephant wall, that's my elephant herd. And uh, here's the next one. And Michael was from the Sedgwick County Zoo in Wichita. And his mate Kianga is on the other wall. And then, anyway, Bibi. So she's a black rhino. I'm not sure how old he is. She is. She has had a baby before in her life. Her, her mate in the Sedgwick County Zoo, Clyde, doesn't seem to know how to have sex. Um, he doesn't seem to be interested. She is continually prodding him. He had, you know, scars on his face that were bleeding from her going, come on. And maybe they've managed to mate since then. And hopefully they have. But, um, Anyway, they hadn't. Bibi would like to have another baby. But this part of a rhino, this upper lip, this part between their, their um, tusk and their lip is the softest thing in the world. It's just this amazingly soft skin. You can't believe it's on a rhino. Rhinos also really love to be touched. They have terrible eyesight, uh, but they have great hearing and they have a really good sense of smell. So this, of course, you can touch them, and when they, when they eat from you, they just, they just like do this. It's just like, it's the softest little thing, just pulling the food right out of your hand with their little hand-like lip like this. As long as you don't startle them and scare them, because their vision is so bad, they are actually very kind and sweet animals. Now over here we have a foursome. And these guys come from all different kinds of places. Now let me straighten Daisy here. So this one's Daisy, and I'm casting a shadow. So Daisy, I also met in the Sedgwick County Zoo in Wichita. She's a Sumatran orangutan. So over here, this guy is Roy. I met Roy at the National Zoo, and he's a Komodo dragon. And a lot of zoos have Komodo dragons. Um, and they're just this wonderful prehistoric animal. And then over here is Nzinga, and Nzinga is a western lowland gorilla that I met at the Santa Barbara Zoo. I'm especially in love with all this little pink that squeaks out around the edge of him because I keep experimenting with color and sometimes it does surprising things that I like. And then over here, this couple, I adore them. They are about actual size. That's about how big they are. And uh, most of these little monkeys come from South America, as they do. They come from the upper Amazon basis, basin. So the countries up there, that the, very, um, the upper reaches of the Amazon are where they live. And those are Goldie's monkeys. And all these little monkeys, when they're in their cages, they're like, <laughs> they're just zipping all around all the time. And to get them to freeze still in one place to take a picture is not always easy. Anyway, I named these two guys Pyramus and Thisbe. I don't know what their real names are. There was a third one in the cage. I wouldn't know which one was which. Perhaps their keepers did, but I just like naming them Pyramus and Thisbe. Now we're moving around to the far wall. So this fellow here is a Markor. I don't know his name. I met him at the, um, at the zoo, in the LA Zoo, and I was only there for like three or four hours. and. Um, and I just sort of found him by accident when I was looking for other things, and he was doing this wonderful thing. He had a not great habitat, but not big. And there was a tree in the middle of it, a small tree, which was wrapped with multiple layers of chicken wire for the tree to keep on living. And um, I wasn't quick enough on the take, so I, I watched him twice where he reared up on his back, on his hind legs, and then put his head straight down and rammed the tree right here. 
So he hit the tree with his forehead. And then he would back up and he did it again and he rammed the tree. And then the third time when I finally got my little cell phone out to take a, a video, he, he got up high, but then he got down on his feet and he decided not to ram the tree and he went away. And this guy here is Jethro and he's a snow leopard. And he was the first animal that I, um, that I painted that I'd actually met, really, that I went to meet, and I found him in, in Syracuse at the Rosamond Gifford Zoo in Syracuse. They had a number of animals, like Markhorse there, but he was the only one I could get a useful photo of, and he was actually playing a stalking game with me when I did this, and um, I watched a keeper play with him, and then I copied the, the keeper, so I turned my back on him, and then he would, like, creep up, and then I turned around quickly, and he would freeze in place. And uh, if I hadn't turned down at that time, then he would have thrown himself up against the chain link fence or whatever he was doing for the stalking, but he was freezing. Um, and that's very unusual. Big cats generally don't play with you. The reason I believe that he did was that he was raised by humans. And so he is, uh, he's tractable. That's what they call him. And this fellow over here is Pandu. And Pandu is no longer alive. Pandu had actually died before I finished his painting, but he died pretty much of old age. He was 16, which is uh, not super long for an animal in captivity, but pretty long and likely longer than Pandu would, lived in the, would have lived in the wild. He is a Malayan tiger, um, and it, we, when you see uh, Talali just down, she's an Amur tiger, you can see that some of the differences. His mane, for instance, is not nearly as good. So Pandu had had um, they had had arthroscopic surgery over the years, and he had had stem cell therapies. The zoo had done many things to try to make him comfortable and mobile. I may start with Talali, because I just finished with Pandu. But this is Talali, and she is an Amur tigress, which is a Siberian tigress, and they are bigger. They weigh more than the Malayan tigers. I think you can likely see that in this. And their mane is bigger, but the Malayan tigers, Malaysia, um, it's hot. It's the tropics. These guys are from Siberia. It's cold. So they are built for the cold. Their coats are thicker and all that kind of stuff. They're, they're built for the cold. Uh, Talali, like Jethro down there, Talali was also hand-raised by people. And so unlike her children, her daughter and her son, and unlike the, the mate that she had been with to father her children, he's no longer at the same zoo, um, those guys are not tractable. Um, they would likely kill me within a short time if I decided to enter their, their habitat. Maybe not with Talali. Um, what, another thing else I found, difference with Jethro, is Talali is looking straight at me in this photo that I managed to get, but she's also way up on the hill when I took this photo. Um, because that's what I found for big cats. They will look at you when they're far away. If they are walking right in front of you, behind the glass or something, they are not looking at you at all. Their eye contact is when they're from a distance. And in this actual photo, she was gnawing on a great big old bone, and the bone was held here between her front paws. It was mainly down in the grass. But as a painter, I could make the bone disappear without Photoshop. So here we are over here, and these are my pears. And these are my Amur uh, leopards from the Santa Barbara Zoo, and they are now inseparable, and hopefully they will make babies one day, and hopefully that their offspring will help to repopulate the reserve that is set up in Russia uh, for Amur tigers and Amur leopards and other endangered species that are there. But that's a longer-term plan. This is Wyatt. He's the male. He's about four, and this is Ajax. She's not two years old yet, and um, that they apparently are just together all the time and really happy. And, th and these two California condors, I've named them Theo and Agat. They're the only animals in this room that I didn't personally met. These are early paintings, but I still love them. And I did get to meet California condors when I was in the Santa Barbara Zoo where I met these two guys because they're a part of the rescue and survival program. But uh, I just find them so beautiful, ugly, and so ugly beautiful. I think. So this is Kianga. Kianga is, is a lioness, an African lioness. As I said, she is the mate to Michael. And it is like, you know, we think of endangered animals and we think of exotic species and things, but lions are endangered. Chimpanzees are endangered. 
I mean, these animals, which have been with us forever, might not be there for our grandchildren. Let that sink in. This beauty here is a bongo, and he's a young bongo. His name is Sheldon, and I met him at the Houston Zoo, and I tried to take his picture every single day. I was there for eight days, and eight days I could never get a single picture of the bongo. And just as I'm leaving, my very last day at the zoo, on my way towards the exit, I'm walking by their enclosure again, and Sheldon comes right up to the fence and poses for his portrait. Thank you, Sheldon. He was behind chain link fence, but again, as a painter, I can get rid of the chain link. So and next to him is a, is a, is a Grevy zebra, and this is a foal. He's a young'un. Uh, he is likely not more than 18 months old when I met him, and I met him in Denver. And uh, the Grevy zebras have the more narrow stripes. And also, when they're his age, when they're young, their stripes are brown, and they blacken as they age. Down here, this fellow, he just had his 41st first birthday, like yesterday. His name is Rudy Valentino. He is a hybrid orangutan, which meant he's Bornean and Sumatran. And that happened before the community decided that there were two separate species, because they don't let them breed together now. But since they found out, you know, then they found out he's a hybrid. And so Rudy has never been allowed to breed, because they're trying to keep the two strains of orangutans distinct within zoos now. And Rudy is, as far as anyone knows, the oldest living hybrid orangutan on the planet. And he's 41, a big boy now. And then next to him is handsome Matt. And oh my god, I am, I am in love with all the great apes, the orangs and the gorillas. So he's a silverback. He's a brand new daddy. He was, his baby had been born 10 days before this. And I think it might have been his first baby. And Matt, I think, is 15 years old. No, 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 Matt's 23 years old. And he had a second baby on the way when his first one was born, so, because um, he gets to, he's the harem gorilla. So the way zoos do it is the male gorillas, only one gets to be with the females, and that's the family group, that's the harem, which is what they have in nature. And then the other male gorillas, that the, the adult male gorillas that a zoo may or may not have, form a bachelor group, and they are together. And they generally can get along with one another and, and uh, not have too much fighting without the women being involved. But uh, now we're going to see Matt's little 10-day-old baby. And here she is. This is little Alika. And she literally is 10 days old. And this is Mama Barika. And it was her first baby. And the zoo didn't let her out. This was the first day the zoo let them out in the, in the room for, where we could watch them too after she was born because the zoo watched to make sure that she would be a good mama. And in fact, she was. She took to it right away. And then this beauty up here, this is a chimpanzee. I don't know if it's a male or a female. I don't know her name. I met, I'm calling it her, but I don't know. Uh, I met her in the uh, LA Zoo where I met the Markor. And she was just so engaging with her eye contact that uh, she wound, getting, wound up getting a painting too. And this is a red pepper that she's eating. And then my very last painting in the show is another silverback. So this is a Jari. So he is one of the bachelor members. He's the youngest of the three bachelors in the, the Houston Zoo's bachelor troupe. And Almost every gorilla you will meet in a North American zoo is a western lowland gorilla. They are endangered. There's also the eastern lowland gorilla, which is even more endangered, but you don't find them in zoos. Uh, there's our mountain gorillas, which um, are actually the only gorilla population that's beginning to creep back in numbers. They do not exist in a zoo anywhere in the world. They exist only in uh, the mountains, in the mountain regions of Uganda and the Congo and uh, uh, Rwundi, I think. Uh, Rwanda, I think. And uh, the other, another very, very endangered gorilla is the Growers gorilla. And you will not find that in zoos anywhere. But you do. So here is my card for the show. Wild at heart. Thank you so much. I'm going to take just a little minute here to say something that has nothing to do with my painting directly. Um, I came really close to dying 
last month. I mean, really, really close. I had no idea. Uh, one of my arteries was clogged. It was between 90 and 95 percent clogged by the time they went in and put a stent in there. I had been getting symptoms since July 7th, was the first one that showed up. And I didn't go to the doctor until the end of October when I had a long-awaited annual physical. If I hadn't had that scheduled appointment, I likely would have gone in several weeks earlier, but truly the gods were with me. Uh, the artery that I had clogged is the LAD, uh, which they call the Widowmaker because it just kills people like that when it completely clogs. And it just wasn't my time. So the, the truth is for women, uh, the symptoms for women are not the same as the symptoms for men. Uh, I had just kept thinking it was heartburn that kept getting worse. I'd never had heartburn before, but at the end of these sessions, um, in which my heart burned, um, I would belch, and the belching would be the relief of whatever the symptoms were. So I thought, oh, I'm belching, it must be heartburn, it can't be heart attack, I don't have any heart issues in my family, nobody has heart issues. That's not quite true that I found out later, but anyway, I'm very lucky to be here. I have a stent in my heart. I'm on a lot of blood thinners, but not too much else. And uh, I'll be back to exercising regularly soon, and it's not affecting me. I can get back to painting, and hopefully I will be able to live into my 90s, as I have always planned. But um, I am very grateful for the second chance that I got. And uh, take care of yourselves also. Thank you so much.